the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. The Lord be with you. Almighty God, to whom all hearts are open, all desires known, and from whom no secrets are hidden, cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Dear friends, welcome once more to the Church of St. Michael and all angels here in Edna. We gather on this, the second Sunday before Lent, and in our Gospel reading, we're taken today back to the beginning, to the prologue of St. John's Gospel, where we hear that the Word became flesh and dwelt among us. For God so loved the world that he gave his only Son, Jesus Christ, his Word, to save us from our sins, to be our advocate in heaven, and to bring us to eternal life. So let us confess our sins in penitence and faith, firmly resolved to keep God's commandments and to live in love and peace with all. Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, we have sinned against you and against our neighbor in thought and word and deed, through negligence, through weakness, through our own deliberate fault. We are truly sorry and repent of all our sins. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, who died for us, forgive us all that is past, and grant that we may serve you in newness of life to the glory of your name. Amen. Almighty God, who forgives all who truly repent, have mercy upon you, pardon and deliver you from all your sins, confirm and strengthen you in all goodness, and keep you in life eternal through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Glory to God in the highest, and peace to his people on earth. Lord God, heavenly King, almighty God and Father, we worship you, we give you thanks, we praise you for your glory. Lord Jesus Christ, only Son of the Father, Lord God, Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world, have mercy on us. You are seated at the right hand of the Father. Receive our prayer. For you alone are the Holy One. You alone are the Lord. You alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father. Amen. Let us pray. Almighty God, you have created the heavens and the earth and made us in your own image. Teach us to discern your hand in all your works and your likeness in all your children. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who with you and the Holy Spirit reigns supreme over all things, now and forever. Amen. A reading from the book of Proverbs. Does not wisdom call? Does not understanding raise her voice? The Lord possessed me at the beginning of his work, the first acts of old. Ages ago I was set up at the first, before the beginning of the earth. When there were no depths, I was brought forth. When there were no springs abounding with water, before the mountains had been shaped, before the hills, I was brought forth before he made the earth with its fields or the first dust of the world. When he established the heavens, I was there. When he drew a circle on the face of the deep, when he made firm the skies above, when he established the fountains of the deep, when he assigned to the sea its limit so that the waters might not transgress his command, when he marked out the foundations of the earth, I was beside him like a master workman and I always, and I was daily in his delight, rejoicing before him always, rejoicing in his inhabited world, and delighting in the children of man. This is the word of the Lord. The response to the psalm, Bless the Lord, O my soul. Bless the Lord, O my soul. O Lord, how manifold are your works. In wisdom you have made them all. The earth is full of your creatures. There is the sea spread far and wide. 
and there move creatures beyond number, both small and great. Bless the Lord, O my soul. There go the ships, and there is that Leviathan, which you have made to play in the deep. All of these look to you, to give them their food in due season. Bless the Lord, O my soul. When you give it to them, they gather it. You open your hand, and they are filled with good. When you hide your face, they are troubled. When you take away their breath, they die and return again to the dust. Bless the Lord, O my soul. When you send forth your spirit, they are created, and you renew the face of the earth. May the glory of the Lord endure forever. May the Lord rejoice in his works. He looks on the earth and it trembles. He touches the mountains and they smoke. Bless the Lord, O my soul. I will sing to the Lord as long as I live. I will make music to my God while I have my being. So shall my song please him while I rejoice in the Lord. Let sinners be consumed out of the earth and the wicked be no more. Bless the Lord, O my soul. Alleluia. Bless the Lord, O my soul. A reading from the first letter of St. Paul to the Colossians. Christ is the image of the invisible God, the firstborn of all creation. For by him all things were created in heaven and on earth, visible and invisible, whether thrones or dominions or rulers or authorities, all things were created through him and for him. And he is before all things, and in him all things hold together. And he is the head of the body, the church. He is the beginning, the firstborn from the dead, that in everything he might be preeminent. For in him all the fullness of God was pleased to dwell, and through him to reconcile to himself all things, whether on earth or in heaven, making peace by the blood of his cross. This is the word of the Lord. May the Lord be in my heart and on my lips that I may worthily proclaim his holy gospel in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with you. Hear the gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to John. In the beginning was the word and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. He was in the beginning with God. All things were made through him, and without him was not anything made that was made. In him was life, and the life was the light of men. The light shines in the darkness, and the darkness has not overcome it. There was a man sent from God whose name was John. He came as a witness to bear witness about the light that all might believe through him. He was not the light, but came to bear witness about the light. The true light, which enlightens everyone, was coming into the world. He was in the world, and the world was made through him, yet the world did not know him. He came to his own, and his own people did not receive him. But to all who did receive him, who believed in his name, he gave the right to become children of God, who were born not of blood, nor of the will of the flesh, nor of the will of man, but of God. And the word became flesh and dwelt among us, and we have seen his glory, glory as of the only Son from the Father, full of grace and truth. This is the Gospel of the Lord. Now, some have described the opening verses, the opening section of St. John's Gospel as being something akin to a bomb of meaning going off, a bomb of meaning. So let's see if we can look at it today and if we can withstand its force. In the beginning was the Word. St. John begins his Gospel by asserting that before anything ever was, there was the Word. He then establishes that the Word was with God before also identifying the Word as being God. So, the Word was with God and the Word was God. He was in the beginning with God. 
Sounds complicated, I know, but in reality, it's an incredibly simple statement. The Word was with God, and the Word was God. They were co-equal, indistinguishable, and yet distinct. And this is how it was in the beginning. St. John then goes on to speak about creation, echoing what we read in Genesis 1. All things were made through him, and without him was not anything made that was made. So God the Father, God, through the Son, the Word, is responsible for everything that is. Nothing has made it into the world apart from him. God created through the Son, without whom nothing could exist. Life then, all life begins with the Son, the Word. In him was life, and the life was the light of men. Light itself, that, that force, that entity, without which nothing can exist, begins with the Son, the Word. In him is all life, and consequently, in him is light. He is the light that shines in the darkness, the light that the darkness cannot overcome. And that word, overcome, could also be translated as comprehend or understand. So we begin to see that whatever happens, the darkness cannot overcome the light and life that is the Word, the Son of God. Even if the forces of darkness should kill him, it will not conquer him. Jesus, the Word, the light, will rise from the dead because life begins with him. Darkness cannot comprehend this. Darkness cannot understand it, but we can. We can comprehend and understand. We can know through faith that Jesus is the word, that Jesus is God, that Jesus is the light and life that can never be snuffed out or extinguished. And next, we're greeted by the familiar figure of John the Baptist. We're reminded that John was sent from God as a witness. That's his primary function, to bear witness about the light so that all might believe, so that all might have faith. Now, lest anyone be distracted by the figure of John the Baptist, his wild appearance and his gruff demeanor, St. John, the writer of this gospel, restates that the Baptist was not the light, but that he came to bear witness about the light. John the Baptist's function is to pave the way because the true light, which gives light to everyone, was coming into the world. So the very source, the fount of life and light, through whom everything was made and without which nothing has ever come into being, was coming into the world. And that's good news, surely, for everyone. And yet, as St. John points out, the light of the world, the true light that gives light to all, the light that is the life of men, the light that darkness cannot overcome, was in the world, and the world was made through him, yet the world did not know him. Such was the darkness and devastation of sin that the world did not recognize the light, even though the world was made by that very same light. How can this be? Hadn't the people of Israel been, been waiting and watching and hoping for the light to come among them? Surely they would recognize and welcome him. But no, he came to his own and his own people did not receive him. The world did not know him and the Jewish people as a whole did not accept him. But some did. Those who believed in his name received him. And in doing so, they became children of God. Those who welcome Jesus, who believe in his name, who recognize him as the word, the light, and the life, they are thereby born into God's family. They're given the right to be called children of God, not because of who their parents are or were, or from any desire or choice made by others, but through the will of God himself. And this is the new birth that brings with it the ability to see, perceive, and know what God is doing in Jesus. And that is what leads us to faith. We have faith because we have received the light and life of Christ. We have seen his glory. We can know and perceive what God has done and continues to do in him. And that's what makes us children of God. But how can we see 
How can we know? How can we perceive? Well, we can do this because the Word became flesh and dwelt among us. God, the Word, became man. Jesus did not cease to be the Word when he became a human being, but rather in doing so, he brought the fullness of God to us through and in himself. He dwelt among us, or he was tabernacled among us. He was enfleshed, such that his glory, the glory of God, was now officially on display for all to see. And to those who are born of God, those who are able to see, they can now know and perceive the grace and truth of God at work in him, at work in Jesus. Who would give something so precious to people like us, like you and me? Would any of us be so generous in giving so much to those who deserve so little? I doubt it. And yet God has given us the light, you and me. The light has come into the world. The darkness cannot comprehend nor overcome it. It killed him, but it could not extinguish him. Thus he rose again. So how are we responding to that light? Are we rejecting or receiving? Are we listening to what John the Baptist has to say or have we closed our ears? John bore witness to the light. Do we believe that life and light has dawned for us in Christ Jesus. For those of us who do, well, there's work now to be done. For we must stand alongside the two Johns. That's St. John who wrote this gospel and John the Baptist, the herald of Christ, the light and life. We must stand alongside the two Johns in bearing witness to Jesus. We must proclaim to all who will listen that the light has dawned. We must tell them, show them, demonstrate to them in any way possible that Jesus is the word through him all things, through whom all things were made. He is the light that gives life. He is full of grace and truth. He is the one who reveals God to us and who comes to make his home among us. Perceive, receive, let faith take hold, become his child, see his glory at work and above all, Bear witness to it in your life. Amen. So let us bear witness to our faith in Jesus Christ, the light of the world, as we join together in the words of the Creed. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten not made, of one being with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation he came down from heaven, was incarnate from the Holy Spirit and the Virgin Mary, and was made man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is worshipped and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy, Catholic, and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead, and the life of the world to come. Amen. Let us pray for the church and for the world, and let us thank God for his goodness to us. God of wisdom, you proceeded forth at creation, bringing life to birth. Breathe that same potency into your church today, so that, as children of your grace, we may rejoice in you. Lord, in your mercy, 
God of wisdom, you delight in humanity. Equip us to share your generous blessing in justice and peace for all. And inspire with your wisdom, we pray, all who lead and govern today. We pray especially for our own government and all those who are leading the efforts to combat COVID-19. Lord, in your mercy. God of wisdom, you have set the world in a universe of order and intricate balance. Guide all who are engaged in the advancement of science and those involved in ethical debate. And let us always know and remind ourselves that it is through you, through your word, that we have our being. Lord, in your mercy. God of wisdom, in your fullness, you chose to come and dwell among us. Give strength to all who are sick or ill or in any kind of need at this time. Lord, in your mercy. God of wisdom, in the cross you reconciled your creation to yourself. Bring into your peace all who have died. And we call to mind any we know who have died recently, for those whose anniversaries occur around this time, and our own departed family members, friends, and loved ones. Rest eternal, grant unto them, O Lord. Lord, in your mercy. And in a moment of quiet, let us offer our own particular prayers, needs, intentions, and thanksgivings to God. Rejoicing in our fellowship with the Blessed Virgin Mary, St. Michael, St. Andrew, and all the saints, we commend ourselves and all for whom we have prayed to God's unfailing love, praying, Merciful Father, accept these prayers for the sake of your Son, our Saviour, Jesus Christ. Amen. Christ is our peace. He has reconciled us to God in one body by the cross. We meet in his name and share his peace. Peace of the Lord be with you always. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation. Through your goodness we have this bread to offer, which earth has given and human hands have made. It will become for us the bread of life. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation. Through your goodness we have this wine to offer, fruit of the vine and work of human hands. It will become our spiritual drink. Pray, brothers and sisters, that this, my sacrifice and yours, may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. Source of all life, the heaven and the earth are yours, yet you have given us dominion over all things. Receive these gifts of your creation which we offer you this day in the name of Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. Father, we give you thanks and praise through your beloved Son, Jesus Christ, your living word, through whom you have created all things, who was sent by you in your great goodness to be our Saviour. By the power of the Holy Spirit, he took flesh as your Son, born of the Blessed Virgin. He lived on earth and went about among us. 
He opened wide his arms for us on the cross. He put an end to death by dying for us and revealed the resurrection by rising to new life. So he fulfilled your will and won for you a holy people. Therefore, with angels and archangels and with all the company of heaven, we proclaim your great and glorious name, forever praising you and saying, Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory, Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord, Hosanna in the highest. Lord, you are holy indeed, the source of all holiness. Grant that by the power of your Holy Spirit and according to your holy will, these gifts of bread and wine may be to us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ, who in the same night that he was betrayed, took bread and gave you thanks. He broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take, eat, this is my body which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same way, after supper, he took the cup and gave you thanks. He gave it to them, saying, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. Great is the mystery of faith. Christ has died. Christ is risen. Christ will come again. And so, Father, calling to mind his death on the cross, his perfect sacrifice made once for the sins of the whole world, rejoicing in his mighty resurrection and glorious ascension and looking for his coming in glory, we celebrate this memorial of our redemption. As we offer you this, our sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving, we bring before you this bread and this cup, and we thank you for counting us worthy to stand in your presence and serve you. Remember, Lord, your church in every land. Reveal her unity, guard her faith, and preserve her in peace. Together with Sally Harris, Christine Lodge, Clarissa Hawes, Isabel Wright, Kathleen Burns, Ellen Cartwright, Peggy Pease, Wendy Bug, Dorothy Wiesel, Scylla Hibbins, Tina Nichols, Margaret Morris, Dorothy Court, Pat Springett, Sue Hartley, Catherine Fandel, Jane Fitzgerald, Denise Woolerton, Bunny Robinson, Diana Holden, Anna Edwards, Gillian Roberts, Adam Wilson, Richard and Diana Page, Busy Muirhead, and amongst the departed, for Kay Innes, for Ken Deeming, Liz Porter, Dot Warren, Rosa Yerkovic, and all who look to you for comfort and strength. Remembering also Frank Batchelor, Henry Lyle, Joan Hubbard, Jenny Stacy and June Powell. Send the Holy Spirit on your people and gather into one in your kingdom all who share this one bread and one cup so that we in the company of Mary, the Virgin Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the apostles, with St. Michael, St. Andrew and all the saints may praise and glorify you forever through Jesus Christ our Lord, by whom and with whom and in whom with all who stand before you in earth and heaven, we worship you, Father Almighty, in songs of everlasting praise. Blessing and honor and glory and power be yours forever and ever. Amen. As our Savior taught us, so we pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. We break this bread to share in the body of Christ. Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world, grant us peace. Jesus. 
This is the Lamb of God who takes away the sin of the world. Blessed are those who are called to his supper. We do not presume to come to this your table, merciful Lord, trusting in our own righteousness, but in your manifold and great mercies. We are not worthy so much as to gather up the crumbs under your table, but you are the same Lord whose nature is always to have mercy. Grant us therefore, gracious Lord, so to eat the flesh of your dear Son, Jesus Christ, and to drink his blood, that our sinful bodies may be made clean by his body, and our souls washed through his most precious blood, and that we may evermore dwell in him and he in us. Amen. To everyone who conquers, says the Lord, I will give permission to eat from the tree of life that is in the paradise of God. Let us pray. God, our creator, by your gift, the tree of life was set at the heart of the earthly paradise and the bread of life at the heart of your church. May we who have been nourished at your table on earth be transformed by the glory of the Saviour's cross and enjoy the delights of eternity. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Almighty God, we thank you for feeding us with the body and blood of your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him we offer you our souls and bodies to be a living sacrifice. Send us out in the power of your Spirit to live and work to your praise and glory. Amen. The Lord be with you. The peace of God which passes all understanding. Keep your hearts and minds in the knowledge and love of God and of his Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. The blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be amongst you and remain with you always. Amen. Go in peace to love and serve the Lord.